So far, we've been doing induction on natural numbers, which has enabled us to reason a little bit about recursive programs on OCaml's integers. But let's try to do something more sophisticated next. Let's try to do proofs about programs involving variance or algebraic data types. We'll start off on familiar ground in a way by coding up a variant to represent natural numbers. That will enable us to see how the inductive proof techniques we've been using carry over to variants. So here's my type for natural numbers. I'm going to represent them in unary. So I'll have two constructors, Z and S. Z stands for zero. It's meant to represent the number zero. And S stands for successor. It carries along another natural number with it. And it represents the number that is one more than that number that is carried. So the abstraction function here is that the number of s's is the natural number that's being represented in unary. So z, z is 0, sz is 1, ssz is 2, and so forth and so on. Now we can code up recursive functions that implement the standard mathematical operations. Now they just have to do it in unary. So here, for example, is an implementation of the plus operation on our type nat. To add together two naturals, A and B, we can implement it by pattern matching. So you could choose which one you want to pattern match on. Here, I'm going to do A. Match A. If it's 0, well, then we're trying to add 0 into some other number. Well, that should leave the other number unchanged. So we'll just return the other number, which is B. But if A is the successor of some other natural number, let's call it K, then we'll recursively compute the result of calling plus on that smaller natural number k along with b. And then we'll add 1. We'll take the successor of the return value there. So this is a uh, correct but slow implementation of addition. You can also implement all the other uh, operations. Some of them are trickier to implement than others. Uh, here's an example of how to implement multiply. I won't walk us through this one other than to point out it's basically doing the same thing. Plus just repeatedly adds 1. Mult just repeatedly adds B. Now, if we want to do induction on one of these variants, on a value of this variant type, how do we do it? You're familiar with how to do induction on naturals when they're numbers, but how do you do it when they're represented this way with code? It's really no different take a look at the proof format for induction on nat. In the base case, we start off with n equal to z, which of course represents 0. It's, it's the same thing as we did before with a base case where we were looking at a natural number that was 0. And we try to show that the property p holds of z. In the inductive case, once more, just like before, we're looking at a natural number which is one more than another natural number. So here the way we express that is that n is equal to s k. The inductive hypothesis is p instantiated on k, and we want to show that p holds when instantiated on the successor of k. That is one more than k. Okay, so the proof format really doesn't change at all. We're just using different notions of what the base values are and what it means to be one bigger than another value. So let's prove a theorem about this. Let's prove that if the second argument to plus is z, then that just returns n, its first argument. Now, why did I pick it this way? What I, why, why did I go for the second argument being z? Well, it's because if the first argument is z, it's a trivial proof. right? In that case, just by evaluation, we automatically return the second. Okay, But this one is more interesting, right? because we can't take a step of evaluation of plus in z here because we don't know what n is. Look back at this implementation here. The first argument is what we're talking about. Immediately we pattern match on that first argument. Now we don't know whether it's going to be 0 or greater than 0. So we're going to need an inductive proof here. OK, I've put the code for nat and plus in here and the claim that we're trying to show. We're going to do this by induction. The base case is really easy. Uh, we instantiate that property p on z. So we're trying to show that plus zz equals z. 
Well, we can take just one step of evaluation of plus z. That, of course, pattern matches on its first argument uh, and returns its second argument. So we know that that evaluates to z, and we're done with that case. For the inductive case, I've set up my inductive hypothesis, and what I want to show here, all right, let's do that proof. Let's pause here. We know how to evaluate plus a little bit in this case, because we do know that that first argument there is not z, right? It can't be z. It's actually got to match successor of k here. So we know what that's going to evaluate to. It's going to be the successor of the recursive call. Now, we can't step the evaluation of plus again there because now we're down to a, a, a natural number k that we don't know whether it's 0 or s. But the inductive hypothesis applies. So we can rewrite the plus kz here as k. And that's what we wanted to show. So we're done, qed. The takeaway here is that we can do induction on algebraic data types in very much the same way that you've learned to do induction on the natural numbers in CS2800.